And then here we go. This is them arriving at building 254 where they get ready to get suited up. You can see uh, both the Prime and the backup crews uh, arriving together with a, a number of uh, other astronauts in attendance to help and also their flight surgeons. Here you can see Sergey Rosansky getting suited up into that Sokol launch and entry suit. Each of the crew members, uh, one at a time, gets assisted by the various technicians there from Roscosmos and Energia. Uh, at this building 254, they'll go through getting suited up and outfitted, and then following this, they'll actually go into a different room and get pressure checks, which we'll, we'll see that in just a few moments. But again, these suits worn throughout all of the dynamic phases of today's launch all the way through docking. Uh, the suits are pressurized, so uh, just in the um, instance of a cabin leak or anything of that nature, the crews are suited up and protected and able to get breathing oxygen and gas directly from the suit itself. The crew arrived at building 254 at about 526 a.m. Central. It was 426 in the afternoon over in Baikonur. Uh, before they got suited up, though, they underwent final medical exams, just a final checkup. But again, all of these crew members quarantined for about two weeks before launch um, just to help prevent any uh, carrying of germs or other uh, potential illnesses to their crew members that they'll be joining on board the station. Uh, and then getting into these Sokol launch and entry suits. There we can see NASA astronaut Randy Bresnik uh, getting suited up as well, wearing uh, the comm cap. Uh, and then you can see, again, being assisted by these different technicians, and the, they're all going through one at a time. The actual suit up began at about 6.11 a.m. Central or 5.11 p.m. in Baikonur, which is about four and a half hours prior to the launch. And again, this all video from about four and a half hours prior to today's launch. So this from a couple of hours ago is uh, the three Soyuz MS-05 crew members were getting suited up in the suit up and integration facility in Baikonur. At this point, Rosansky and Bresnik already suited up and then Paolo Nespoli uh, awaiting his turn getting into that, into that Sokol launch and entry suit. And then once the crew is finished getting that initial suit up, they move into another room. There's a protective pane of glass <coughs> in order to maintain that quarantine status. And then the crew one by one uh, goes through a series of leak checks on the suits. And, uh, here you can see uh, the backup crew, uh, Kanai from the Japanese Space Agency. But again, the crew members one by one getting into a mock-up, so basically a simulation of their seat inside the Soyuz, and then technicians getting a chance to actually pressurize the suit. You can see Rosansky in the chair first, and the suit actually bubbles up a little bit um, as it gets pressurized with air with the helmet closed. Bresnik was up second. And then all of this video being taken from behind a protective pane of glass, all that being done to kind of maintain that crew member quarantine status. And then friends and family on the other side of the glass, as you can see here, some of Rosansky's friends, family, this actually the last opportunity that each of the crew members gets to 
chat with their family and friends in attendance there in Baikonur and say some of their farewells before they head over to the rocket. Here Bresnik getting his turn in the chair, the, the suit getting pressurized. You can see it fill up a little bit. And then following that, Nespoli, the third and final to go through this checkout as well. So again, this some video taken from a couple of hours ago, the three crew members, Bresnik, Rosansky, and Nespoli, getting a chance to talk to friends and family in attendance there in Baikonur to watch their launch from that behind that pane of glass just to maintain their quarantine status. But following friends and family, they usually get a chance to talk to some of the NASA, Roscosmos, and European Space Agency management in attendance as well. So we should see that momentarily, but this kind of one of the final moments for the crew to relax just before heading out to the launch pad, strapping into the rocket and getting ready to blast off from Baikonur. And so again, at this point, the crew getting a chance also to talk to some of the program officials in attendance. Speaking right here is uh, Igor Komarov, the head of Roscosmos, the Russian Federal Space Agency. A little bit further down the line, uh, representatives from ESA and also uh, Bill Gerson-Meyer, all the way at the end there, the NASA Associate Administrator for Human Exploration and Operations. But again, this just kind of their final, one of their final chances as well to speak to the crew members through this pane of glass before they head out to the launch pad. And right there, NASA uh, administ acting administrator Robert Lightfoot, also in attendance for this launch and getting to talk to the NASA crew member Randy Bresnik. And so with all those preps behind him, the crew left site 254 waving farewell. You can hear some cheers for the crew members as they walk down to salute the members of the state commission. It was about 6.45 p.m. in Baikonur uh, in the 90s. We we're told by our friend Rob Mabius, uh, NASA PAO over on Baikonur, it's a dry heat, thankfully, uh, but definitely some balmy weather uh, for the crew today.
Then the crew members once again boarded a bus all suited up. And that happened again at about 6.45 or so in Baikonur and then getting on the bus for the ride over to launch pad number one. That drive takes about 25 minutes, arriving at the pad at about 8.06 a.m. Central Time, 7.06 p.m. in Baikonur. And uh, both the Prime and the backup crews, along with NASA Roscosmos and ESA officials, arriving at the pad. And again, the crew members arrived at the pad at about 7.06 p.m. in Baikonur, getting a chance to take a few last second photos, waving goodbye at the pad, and then boarding the elevator up to the top of the Soyuz. And again, one by one, they start climbing the stairs and get a chance to do one final wave goodbye before they load into the elevator and then head to the top of the Soyuz rocket and get into the capsule where they've been for almost two hours now. The Soyuz you can see behind already billowing uh, oxygen which is fueled about three hours prior to the launch. Rusansky at the bottom, Nespoli in the middle and Bresnik at the top and then again waving goodbye one more time and then making their way over to the elevator to ride to the top of the Soyuz rocket. And there we have it, our first 